Aquarius Festival engaged Aboriginality. There was this extraordinary Bantu man with a djembe called Barkal Stone who went up, made it his mission in life to get Aboriginal representation into the Nimbin Aquarius Festival. He ended up in Alice Springs. I saw him the year before last. He's still working out there in New End the Mood, organising things. Anyway, he was magical. Two minutes. He was magical with the djembe, totally charismatic, and he got all this stuff happening. And on the first night of the festival, and I'm ashamed to say I didn't run the Aboriginal blind, there was a welcome to country by Uncle Dick Dickie Donnelly. We'd gone to get the Gundarimba people in the gates. This is the first welcome to country in modern Australian history. Yeah? A strange legacy of Aquarius. Anyway, I wanted to tell this story, but I couldn't remember who the black guy was at the Aquarius Festival. I always thought it was Gary Foley, and for years I said it was until he very curtly told me to stop slandering him. He'd never been to the Aquarius Festival. Right? Well, lost in wonder. But of recent time, because of this journey through Aboriginality, you know, because of the Nimbin Rocks, I've been on this mission about remembering the frontier wars as part of ANZAC, to actually create a cultural shift in militarism to recognise the first wars, the most savage wars, the most victims, the most transformation of landscape and culture this land has ever seen in maybe 100,000 years, not remembered at all. So I've had this extended relationship with Aboriginal leaders around Australia now for some years. And Dennis Walker turned up on the tent embassy when I was there. Dennis Walker, the late Dennis Walker, is the son of Ujuru, the famous poet, Kath Walker. He did some time in jail, eight years in jail, for taking a policeman's gun from its holster and shooting holes in the Rainbow Cafe roof in Nimbin. But it turned out to be the best thing that could have happened for him. I should have said, look, let's speak about before that. The original Black Panther. He was the guy that stood up and said Aboriginal people should start organising themselves and arming themselves against the police. Incredibly brave thing to do in Queensland, right? And he did it. He carried it off as this charismatic spokesman, but landed up as a wreck in Nimbin, only to be arrested and sent to jail where he had a wonderful time, right? It dried him out and he got an education. He started doing a lot of reading and really exercised his excellent mind. So when we used to, when it come together, he was now on the tent embassy, living in a van, plugged into the free power with air conditioning, and with warmth in summer, couldn't walk. He damaged his foot, so he's wasting away there. We began reminiscing. And I said, I'd like to tell you the story about when I met your mother. And she told me your story. So I did. And I said, what's your story about me? He said, the first time I saw you, you were wearing a dress. AUS, AUS conference, 1973. How amazing. So it was with that kind of relationship that we came. This turned out what they call Nimbin, a post Marbo town. This is where the new culture, as Bina was talking about, this is where the new dreaming begins. Yeah? This is what's going to happen. Why I say it's so important to recognise and commemorate the frontier wars. It is the gateway to reconciliation. It is the gateway to a culture that respects this land. It's a gateway to a new dreaming that has roots, maybe a hundred thousand years old. Wouldn't you want to be part of that? <laughs> Welcome to the dreaming. Yeah. It's still alive today as it was 100,000 years ago and it was 45 years ago. Thank you, thank you, Graham.